Hello guys, and yeah, fruit review. I'm recording this on the 18th, 11.45. And yeah, this right here is a Golden Delicious versus a Organic um, Golden, not Golden Delicious, Organic Granny Smith. And I probably shouldn't have watched, wa washed probably this one because after I did it, I figured out that, oh yeah, I do have an a non-organic Granny Smith as well. So I, I could have, you know, compared. But since I've already watched uh, washed them, I'm going to be like, ah, oh well. So let's try the Golden Delicious first. And I mean, these are two My Little Pony characters that I'm eating. So let's see how they taste. Yeah, I like that texture. It's a bit too like soft uh, when you bite into it. Like it's it's not soft here, but as soon as you bite into it, it can become mushy. It's not like a crisp apple, and the flavor. nothing special like um, like like semi sweet maybe not not I would well it is sweet but it's not like wow it's sweet it's just like a lower than average apple sweetness I'd say And like okay juiciness. Now, the Granny Smith. I know that this is gonna be have, probably have a good crunch, but it's gonna be too sour for me. I don't like like super sour apples, and Granny Smith tend to be a bit on the sour side. Well, it doesn't have that problem, but I don't like the flavor of the Granny Smith. And it isn't as crunchy as I remember it. It is closer to this than a crunchy apple. Huh. And out of these two, I do think the... The Golden Delicious is better um, because I act. I think the texture is better on the Golden uh, on the Granny Smith, but it isn't good. And everything else is like a negative on the Granny Smith, especially like the most important part of an apple, I guess, is the actual flavor. And I think the Granny Smith isn't good. Oh my. Alright, well, there are. Uh, let's see, there are three comments. The reason why Nick Nana Hardy LFG. Uh, and that was on LVO 40k fi finale, day three, Nick versus Tony G. Alright. <coughs> well, that probably. If you know about these people, maybe, or you, if you're into like the competitive 40k scene, you might understand what that comment means. I don't. I'm not that into 40k competitive scene. I do watch like some games from time to time. I mean, I will say from that time, I actually watched the entire of the LVO then. 
uh, which was the per- I think the first and only time I did it. And I guess maybe it's my fault for watching that it became kind of like I guess the most controversial uh, LVO. Maybe me watching it is the reason it happened. Uh, all right, let's see. Lazul. <coughs> this dude is very skilled if he can dual wield a sword and a whip, but it's objectively a bad combination because the whip doesn't do that much damage. In fact, it shouldn't even make the skeletons flinch, but it's a rule of cool thing anyway, whatever. In Dark Souls or Castlevania, it works the same way. Yeah. And whips are cool weapons, so I mean... But I, I guess there's a reason why whips were never really used in warfare, right? They were, and they were mostly used, you know, in like farming or like in slavery settings where the people can't fight, really fight back and they don't have any armor or anything, right? <coughs> it's more of a weapon just to cause pain without like causing serious injury because you don't want to injure your fucking animal because if you injured your animal you're like oh shit you're just hurting yourself the same way you like damage your own slaves you just it's a stupid thing to do uh so yeah that's it but it still is a cool weapon i think it looks cool when using it the sound effect's good I guess one good thing about City of Brass, I guess, is the fact that, well, the whip, for all I know, it didn't actually do damage to the skeletons. It did. If you hit the on the head, it flinches them. Which I could see happening, you know. The skeletons, they don't have padding like we do. Like, we have, we have flesh. We have a brain. Um, which, is, you know, we have flesh, all that. They have only, like bone so well for me it would be like this well for skeleton might be like this you know so maybe the impact becomes worse for them and maybe skeletons hitting them on the head with like a blunt thing blunt trauma or maybe it's just the noise of the whip hitting their head that stuns them i don't know yeah one good cool thing was that you could use it to like drag skeletons. <coughs> you hit them on the leg and you pull them. Um, yeah. But other than that, I think City of Rass was a pretty boring game. Uh, roguelites are not for me. And then another... Oh yeah, that comment was on first like City of Brass. Obviously. Uh, let's see, the next comment. If you replay Fallout 4 with the hot diggity perk overhaul mod, the QE leaning to the sides, the start me up redux mods, or so, I'd watch. Or some other Pokemon game or ROM hack. That would be entertaining if you ain't worn out of gaming. Um, I do have a plan on doing a Pokemon Let's Play, but I'm planning on doing another Let's Play in before I do the Pokemon Let's Play. But I do have... Um, plans. It's either Pokemon Upalo, Palo, which is kind of like a Pokemon game. Like if it's completely just a new Pokemon uh, that you know the person who made the hack, if you want to call it, created, or a. Pokemon Soul Silver Heart Gold Overhaul that is set, I think, a few years after the original games. Um, <coughs> that one, I played up until the second badge, I think, before I decided, you know what, I would rather do like a let's play of this. So I decided to stop playing that one. Uh, but up until the second gym, I actually really, really, really like that one. But I do have those two. Like planned out. Which one I will start? I don't know. But the next two Pokemon Let's Plays are most likely going to be those two. Um, but that wouldn't be up until probably like May or something. Uh, yeah, I think. 
maybe May or June is when I would even consider starting uh, Pokemon Let's Play. Uh, and then Fallout 4, ah, like, I don't think I would ever replay that game. Uh, especially since I have so many games to play that I have never played. Um, and, like, I get more games faster than I can even play the ones I have. So the, the backlog is actually going up. Uh, but I think if I start doing, you know, first looks, better, like, more of them. Even if I were to only do, like, one or two first looks a week... Like, I would catch up on my backlog, because my backlog is probably 200 games at the moment. I actually don't know how many games there is. I'm just guessing 200. Let's see. 3, so 6, 9, 18, 27, 36, uh, 39, 41. And that's on just on Steam, but some of these games that I have like installed on Steam, I've played, so I don't know if it actually is 41, but let's say 41 games on Steam, probably 100 on Amazon, and let's say 40 on the Epic Games Launcher. So, yeah, let's say around 100 games, so half of what I just said when I said 200. Uh, yeah, that doesn't even include good old games or Ubisoft Connect or Origin. In the Origin, I think it's just one game. Uh, but, yeah, they exist as well. So that probably brings it up to like 120, 130 games, I'd say. Maybe even 150, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know, my plan is to figure out which game to do a Let's Play of um, before, like, I plan on doing one or two Let's Plays before the Pokemon, and the way I'm going to find out which game to do that is, is with first looks. If I play a game, and I really like it during the first look, and I feel like, ah, you know what, I like this game, and I think it would be okay to Let's Play then I'll I'll do a let's play. I, I think that's kind of like how I decide to do let's plays. Um, 